What's happening, everybody, and welcome back to the Funky Brain Podcast. My name is Dennis, but our guest today is a business storyteller and co-writer of the best-selling book, Leaving Drugs and Alcohol Addictions for Good, where she openly shares her story, which I'm going to have her talk about here in a little bit. And uh, she's a regular contributor to My Mountain Town Magazine, published in medium.com, and her stories have been featured in multiple books, magazines, and websites around the globe. Mrs. Sharon Montgomery, how are you doing today, Sharon? Doing great, Dennis. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. This is a, it's a good day and I'm real excited to be able to chat with you about, um, about my book, but also about the uh, addiction journey from the loved one's point of view. I think it's pretty amazing to have, uh, be able to chat with that openly. Yeah, well said. I appreciate that. As everybody knows, Funky Brain Podcast is based in uh, addiction recovery and life mastery. And the reason Sharon and I connected is because she has a really powerful story about how her son became caught in the devastating world of addiction, like a lot of our listeners, and I did as well. And your book tells the story of how biochemical restoration radically improves your chances of recovery, which I think is fascinating. And I can't wait to hear like your explanation about it. But what I'd like to do is to start with like, tell us a little bit about your story and what it was like and what happened and then, you know, how it brought you to where you are today. It was one of those wake up moments for me. And I don't, I don't speak to, I'm not a professional. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a therapist, any of that. I'm just going to let you know <clears throat> what I am a professional um, is, is I'm a professional newbie to addiction. So when, when I found out that my son had been using um, and struggling with addiction, everything about it was new for me, whether I had my head in the sand or whether I was, you know, just so grateful that we didn't have drugs or alcohol as part of our, I don't know, our, our past, whatever it was, I was caught cold. Um, I didn't understand what was going on. And so for me, I went from life's good. I have some you know, we have kids, they go through a hard phase, teens, early 20s. As a parent, you just have hard stuff that you get through with kids. But when this happened, I felt like my reality had blown up, blown up. And then my first step was just having to go back through what did I know about kids who were on drugs? What did the parents do? And all I knew was what friends or family or what I'd see on the news or in the media. And they were, it was conflicting things. Um, So it was everything from, oh, I have a, I have a relative who's on drugs. He's an addict. We just had to finally not look, not talk to him. We couldn't let him in the house. We couldn't, we couldn't let him borrow money. We just had to kind of throw away our relationship. And that was what I was getting over and over again. And the other part was, we don't talk about it. It was things like having problems and struggling. It was never specific. And so I was drowning in what is going on? Do I have to really throw away my son in the this bin, this addict bin, and and walk away because he wouldn't do what I needed. I had no idea how to help him. And I, I'm not a mom that can just walk away from her son. But at the same time, because of the, the things that were leading up to this part, the lack of trust, having to bail him out from different things, paying his bills, or all of these things that I just thought it would be easier to kind of cover up or to go through. He doesn't have the life skills yet to, the you know, for his own accountability. He's, he's a boomerang kid. He's a struggling kid. He's depressed. I have all of these notions to work through, right? So I was, I mean, I was physically sick at night. He was still living with us. And so <laughs> Lauren was this, this kid who was, kind and vibrant and funny, really great at whatever he set his mind to. And he went from that guy who's just going through his 20s or whatever, early 20s, teens, to couldn't hold down a job, broke up with his girlfriend, couldn't, everything good that was going on in his life that I saw 
was just going right in the toilet. And so it led me to, led me to Google, led me to, what is this? What do I do? Because it was breaking apart our, um, our family, so to speak. We all, we didn't know we were taking sides. We didn't know, we didn't mean to, but it was that, can I trust them or not? Can I trust what's going on or not? Do I have money to cover this? Do I have time or energy or heartache left? That's kind of where I was when I reached out to Joe Isley's center and other centers. I was just looking at, well, what does it take to get help, you know, to get to, to send someone to a rehab place? And again, all I knew was the lingo, rehab place. How do I send my addict son to a rehab place? And it sounded a whole lot like I had to come up with a lot of funds and send my son off and then hope for the best. Maybe it would stick, maybe it wouldn't. You know, I, I saw somewhere that people would just rotate once they went into the rehab units. It would, you go and then you relapse and you go and you relapse. And so I, I had all these questions and I, I stumbled across uh, Joe's center from a kind of a, a referral from my, my therapist, my family therapist that we had. She said, you know, Lauren's, Lauren's a good kid. He's a good guy and he deserves someone with a big heart and you should, you know, maybe check out this other way of doing recovery. And it had to do with biochemical restoration. It had to do with holistic healing, the, the whole body systems coming into alignment. Um, and it sounded very out there for me. I was always a person who, you yeah, vaccinate the kids, you, you, you know, you give them all the immunizations, we go to doctors, we don't go to shaman, we don't go to, we don't go off the wall anywhere. That's where I was very traditional. But what came from it was a very, very tender and individualized and kind uh, beginning to a story for accountability. Uh, both for my son, Lauren, but also for me, what was I doing to enable versus what was I doing to support? I would add to that also, Dennis, that I may get some flack for this, but this is real for me. It was easier. It was so much simpler to be angry and frustrated and go and, and feel done. I was, it was so much easier to say, you're doing this to me. You're doing your addiction, your habits. You, it's your choice. And we had some of that in our family. We had, um, my husband um, felt differently than I did. My sons and my daughter, we all had different roles. But I would say it's so much easier just to be mad. It's righteous indignation. Oh, how dare you ruin my life? How dare? And uh, that was part of the addictive behavior for me. Because it's easier than saying, what has happened? What has, have you been struggling with, Lauren? that it is so rough on you that you, this is your solution or this has been and now you're addicted and now it's it's now a medical it's a it's a brain response instead of a choice what has happened to cover that pain and to try to keep it from us and handle it on yourself you know oh, i got i got this i got this i can do one drink or i can do one of this or one of that as opposed to him trusting us because we've been so busy saying you, 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 the relationship wasn't there. It was eroding just left and right. So it was way easier to be angry than it was to go. Yeah. I'm part of this. I haven't studied biochemical restoration either, except for the last three years in a, (laughs) in a secondhand thing. However, I can, I can speak to what I've seen and what I've learned and what I've watched implement in my son's life. It's the whole body, the whole, all of our systems are what um, is important to, to speak to. As long as it's just about, hey, maybe stop drinking. Hey, maybe stop smoking, stop doing drugs. There is a large, large chunk that we're missing out on. And that's where the, the what you're already doing. There's a difference between um, sobriety, which is, just not drinking or smoking or doing drugs. It's, it's, it's not having the chemical in your system and being in long-term recovery. And so um, in the book, we talk about the, the, the different stages, which is uh, the use, abuse, 
when it flips over from abuse into addiction, what's the difference? And then we go into um, the different parts of recovery, which is sobriety and then short-term recovery and long-term recovery. It's not just, hey, I'm off the wagon or I'm on the wagon. It's not that, there's so much more. And it comes down to the biochemical aspects. The, um, how's your diet? Are you feeling depressed? Are you feeling anxious? Uh, the sleepless nights, the racing mind, all of those things need to be taken care of and addressed. Otherwise, especially because of the amount of um, malnutrition that happens on the addiction train. Uh, so many, so many times people have really crappy eating habits. They have crappy lifestyle habits that that are part of the problem, just like you said. So the biochemical restoration aspect is being able to run um, a series of tests based on that individual and be able to really dial in to uh, everything from genetics to uh, amino acid levels, to your, your brain um, paths, those neural paths, everything that is the biochemical part that you really don't know you have, you, you don't necessarily have control of. And what that does, Dennis, is it takes addiction from a personal fight or a personal choice or a, you're a bad person for becoming this addict or whatever. You, they take, it takes the morality out of it and puts in the science, the logic. Okay, well, someone's having a ton of cravings because they went right from getting out of a treatment center maybe and started eating a ton of sugar or going back to smoking or whatever it is, right? Those, the, the sugar has a biochemical effect in the brain. It absolutely treats it just like you're going right back on, uh, you're falling off the wagon, so to speak. And that brain is being fed with that addictive chemical again. So it opens up all of those habits again, because your body is going, oh, finally I have something, right? That relief. And again, from my experience, watching Lauren, experiencing this when I went through my own, um, for lack of better word, recovery process from him, you know, being addicted to, I need to be in control. I need to find out what you're doing with your recovery. How is it looking? You know, my own addictive behaviors, where did it come from in my life? Where did it come from in my past? Why are these triggers and those aren't triggers? All of those things are part of that biochemical restoration of putting our bodies' systems back into alignment and being able to have help, support, and a plan and accountability, your own accountability, my own accountability to do that. And it becomes a way of life. It's not I'm 30 days sober, I'm 30 years sober. It's about incorporating a new way of life. Yeah, well put. I mean, basically, I think my whole coaching practice is uh, pretty much identical. Everything from the amino acid therapy to uh, uh, the exercise, the diet. You said something interesting about how the sugar is just replacing that uh, exact same thing as the drugs or the alcohol and affecting the brain the same way. But I'll offer that sugar can even be worse. You know, sugar doesn't make me drive my car into things that don't move, but it does wreak havoc on my system from my uh, pancreas all the way up to my brain. It, it's a it's a destroyer of your body for sure. And, uh, you know, we all do it. I, I'll eat cookies too every now and then. I try not to, but I do. But the big component here, and this is what I drill home in, with my clients, and it sounds like I'm sure you guys do on some level, is that these are all distractions from the real problem, right? Drinking, snorting cocaine, whatever your addiction is, or food, or porn, or Netflix, or your iPhone, or politics, whatever it is, they're all distractions from feeling. I never learned how to feel, and I, I'm not good at that, at processing feelings. I'm way better than I used to be. I'm slightly more mature than I was 17 years ago. The point is, it's like, we have to work on that because that's the reason I do these things. So we have to work on that component, and that all comes from having everything in alignment like you were just talking about. I love the approach, and I love how you guys do that. So the question I would say is uh, you guys are also addressing the emotional issues as well. 
yeah, you may agree with me, but that's the, that's the harder or the more real, honest, authentic part of dealing with any addiction. And I, and I absolutely agree. People who say, oh, you know, I, I, I don't know anybody in addiction. What, what would this book or what does this philosophy or this, this uh, method have to do with me? I'm not on drugs or I'm not this, what a, we all have addictions. We're all addicted to exactly like what you just said. We all have it. We're all part of the addiction community, whether we know it or not. I bet if, if we wouldn't classify ourselves, if someone doesn't classify themselves as having an alcohol or drug addiction, they know somebody who's struggled with that. They very intimately, you know, oh, I know someone and then it ends up being their wife, their husband, their boss, their child, their um, church person or their neighbor. We're all more connected than we think until we're able to have our own accountability for that addiction aspect, we really can't be able to to get through to the other side, which is the solution. And as long as our loved ones are fighting this battle alone, because, because they know that it's their problem and not ours, then all of the other habits that you're talking about, all of the other hard things that we have to tackle, we have to tackle communication, we have to tackle honesty and accountability and, and, um, you know, a, a framework for what are we going to do different? That's not any different than anybody trying to go on a diet or uh, I say it's not any different. It's very similar, right? It's still accountability. It's still reaching out. It's still getting help. It's still having milestones. One thing I think that you're talking about, and I love this, and we are in perfect alignment with everything. It's like, you know, going back to what I just said about feelings, I don't know how to feel. But I'm not good mm-hmm. at feeling and processing feelings. And uh, none of us are. And so like the biggest addictions in the world, really, I mean, we always talk about alcohol when we associate alcohol with addiction, but I would say there's the three and everybody can fight about which comes first, but like there's the biggest one, in my opinion, is codependency. There's an old um, philosopher and he said, all of man's and women's problems come from our inability to sit quietly in a room by ourselves. We can't do that. It drives us crazy. So we go to Starbucks in the middle of the afternoon to get coffee. We go to Chick-fil-A at three o'clock, even though we're not hungry, or we watch porn, or we have to look at our iPhones on Facebook or, or this or that, whatever it is. So there's codependency, the iPhone, and probably Starbucks would be like the three biggest addictions in the world. But nobody associates those because those aren't ruining my life. You know, that's what we say. Well, you know, what somebody sitting at Starbucks in the middle of the afternoon complaining about their spouse and looking at Facebook, that those are all addictions. And we don't, those are distractions from feeling, from dealing with the real problems. I mean, that's some like deep level stuff and not everybody's willing to look at things that way because they don't drink too much. Right. There's a large um, blind spot that I had that was kind of an extension of NIMBY, um, not in my backyard, right? If, if someone goes to the, the, um, city council and complains about something or whatever and uh they have a solution and they want to bring it in this neighborhood to build for more jobs or whatever. oh not not in my backyard not you know and and it's real easy to go yeah i'm not i don't need to look at it. i don't need to know where it's coming from i just know there's some things going on somewhere else that's very sad <laughs> but if it slaps us upside the head and comes into our home into our life then we then it's an opportunity Dennis, I would say looking back after the last four year journey, well, more, but just the last four years, the realization part of it's an opportunity to do life different, to do communication different, to do learning and support and communication different. It's an opportunity. It is. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the reasons I do what I do is because I used to struggle a lot with like, what's my purpose? Why am I here? I almost died thousands of times or even killed people with drunk driving, with drugs, whatever it was, but I'm still here. And you hear about some young girl walking across the street and gets wiped out by a drunk driver. Why am I here? You know, why are young kids dying of cancer? And I, who screwed up my life for so many years, get to experience all that life has to offer. So I used to struggle with it a lot. But what I come to realize is that our purpose, my purpose is the same as all of ours, is to help. 
And that's why I do the podcast. That's why I wrote my book. That's why I do what I do for a living. But I love what you have on your website. It says, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. And I, I really love that because without having that, like that's the reason I coach and my focus of my coaching and my whole practice is that it's addiction recovery. It's because that's my past. So I can sit here to somebody who's struggling and crying and their life's falling apart. And I could be like, yeah, I know I was there. And so I can speak from the heart. So I love that quote that you had. It's like, nobody, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. So what does that mean to you? Tell us a little bit about that. It came to a head for me when I, I started off writing this book for Joe. Just, hey, he needs his story written, right? Great, I'll be behind, I'll be behind the lines. Nobody needs to see me and I can get a little bit more information about how to help my son. I'll keep it professional, blah, blah, blah. No, that is not how life works. It's messy. And as soon as I got past my, uh, I don't know, awe, oh my gosh, this guy, Joe, he knows what he's talking about. He's a clinical director for a, for a, a center that has been in business for 20 years and helped thousands and thousands of people. Who am I? Who am I to write any of this? Or who am I to insert my point of view? That quote came up because Joe basically, he's, he's not pretentious at all. He's just a guy. He's just a regular Joe, really. He's, he's like a regular dentist right there. That's just, he's seen some stuff um, and then talks about it a whole lot like you. So as soon as I could get past myself of, oh, what does this person know? What does this person need? Whatever. I, I can't be everything to everybody. I couldn't be everything to my son. Um, and, and so like with Lauren, he didn't care how much was I was learning from Joe. He didn't care. He had his own life. He had his own stuff going on. And it wasn't until I was working on my own communication or honesty about my role in addiction, in this family addiction, that there was ever a space for us to open up for him to trust. Nobody couldn't care less. There's all kinds of free resources on the internet or wherever we want to go. But unless you care enough about the story, about the person, unless you know that there is substance behind all of the statements, um, there's a vulnerability that really needs to happen. And it's a beautiful thing to have someone else believe in me, that someone, you know, your clients believe in you. That's vulnerability. You could do a lot of damage. I could do a lot of damage. And I didn't realize what a blessing and what a role the responsibility is to have somebody else's vulnerability and to be vulnerable and how it plays in everything from writing this book, having my story with Lauren or in my own writing, in my own, you know, clients, nobody cares about the stats and the anything else until there is a connection that makes a person open up. Yeah, well said. I agree with you 100%. Uh, well put. So now that you're uh, on the other side of that, at least for now, that's great. And now um, life is blossom. So I like to move in at this point to, you know, we went, we got through some of these hard times and now we're get to live life. And now, so your business is doing well. Tell us about your business now and how you're helping other people, business owners, right? Writing with, uh, you know, getting their messages out there. What's fun about writing for me um with me is just that it's kind of how I write anyway it's important for me to find the story beneath the facts and I started out with just writing for other business owners everybody needs their content zhushed or redone but also uh, just back to that vulnerability part you can have blogs you can have articles all day but unless you know about that person or that business a little bit then um so that's where I came in as a storyteller. So as a business storyteller, now, um, you know, fast forward another three years, four years, it has been a fun thing to be able to connect with uh, other people who want their stories written. They, they want to um, put their story out there as well. And, and, and so it's a little bit validating, I guess, but also just very... Mm, it, it just makes my heart feel good that 
There are um, businesses like yours that are about connecting. They're about going, yeah, I can give you a bunch of information, but what do people want and what do they need? Oh, they need to know it's a safe place. They need to know it's a safe place to open up and to connect and to do things differently. And so um, that's really what my business focuses on is how to implement the heartfelt or, or the, the hard topics and be able to take maybe complicated uh, complicated topics or complicated um, stats or whatever and break them down into a story, into a relatable aspect. So that's what my, that's what my business has been. Yeah, and that's awesome. And it's, you know why you're successful, I think, is because you're doing what you love. Yeah. And, you know, and I think um, a lot of people get stuck. I've, I'm doing other podcasts and other uh, blogs and doing another book. And I'm talking about stuff like this where, you know, a lot of the reasons we're stressed out and unhappy and miserable, unhealthy and get and turn to things like addiction is because we're just so miserable in our lives and we're doing things that we're doing what we're not necessarily supposed to do, but that we heard on the news or that our parents growing up, that mass consciousness told us this is what we're supposed to be doing. And then we, we start living that way and go into that, that job that pays the bills, even though we're miserable. And then laying in bed in the morning with the covers over our head, afraid to get out of bed because we're not happy there and we're unfulfilled, but we don't know how to change it. So the way you change it is to change. Like nothing changes if nothing changes. And when you start doing something that feeds your soul, you, you want to hop out of bed early. Like I want to kick those covers off every morning. I'm like, today I'm going to help at least like six people today. And I'm like, let's go. Like, I'm going to wake up. I'm going to go exercise. I'm going to uh, get like ready to attack the day. And how can I be better today? Who can I help today? That's what living is to me. And so it sounds like you're doing that. You did that by writing your book and by doing the work that you do. And I appreciate that. So awesome stuff. So if people want to get in touch with you, how do they go about doing that? Or buy your so book you, or whatever. Uh, yeah. So um, you can always go on Amazon. But to me, there's something great about being able to go to um, innerbalancehealthcenter.com um, slash addiction book, addiction hyphen book hop on there and then you can read a little bit about the book, the, the first chapters there um, and, and be able to do that. It's been kind of fun to have uh, little book clubs and things and, and interactions with people that, you know, want, want to chat with me more and be able to have me sign their book, which is very odd for me, by the way, let me just write it anyway. Um, so, so just reach out on my email, just do Sharon at N dash compass writing dot com and happy to be able to send out a book or just go up onto Amazon or onto Interbalance Health awesome. Center dot com. For the business writing stuff, what's that website? N dash compass writing dot com. And so specifically that's for people like businesses, established businesses or starting businesses that want to just get the right message out or a better message out or whatever have everything improved on content whether it's their website social media whatever stuff like that right and you can reach out on facebook as well so i'm at sharon thornton montgomery on facebook i'm on instagram um, i'm on medium and i would love to hear from people who who would love to partner with me it's great awesome sharon thanks so much do you have any closing arguments maybe not arguments but a lot of gratitude for for the opportunity to be here and i think what you're doing dennis is an important work it's important to be able to give people opportunities to, to heal the whole self and to be vulnerable and authentic. And I think you're doing a great work. And I love that Joe's doing the same thing and I'm excited to be part of the work. So. Well, I'm excited that you were part of it today and I appreciate it. So thanks for coming by and uh, thanks everybody for tuning in to the Funky Brain Podcast. I hope you heard something great. Have a great day today. Enjoy your day and um, we'll see you next time. Bye for now. So you can't think your way into a new way of acting. You have to act your way into a new way of thinking and being. Hi, I'm Dennis Berry, best-selling author, speaker, and life coach for addiction recovery. So many people are stuck in their addiction, whether it's like drugs or alcohol or food or shopping or sex or money, and they think they could just stop or try to figure it out on their own, but they don't change anything in their lives. Nothing changes if nothing changes. 
In order for change to happen, you have to change something. My clients will be like, oh, I'll stop tomorrow, or if this happens, then I stop, or someday I'll just give it up. And then they just sit around and think, 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 and hope for different or better results, but it doesn't happen. You have to take action. Action most people aren't willing to take. People don't become willing until they're in enough pain, me included. And unfortunately, they wait, and they wait and time passes by. Even if you are willing, you don't even know where to begin. And that's where I come in. In my best-selling book, Funky Wisdom, A Practical Guide to Life, I talk about the how approach. How do I get sober? How do I stop doing drugs? How do I become healthier? How do I have more successful relationships? How do I become more financially successful? And the answer is how. Honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness. I have to honestly admit that there's a problem. I have to honestly admit that things aren't going well and there needs to be changes. And then once I do that, the door opens and I become open to seeing new ways of living. And then I become willing to make those changes. You can't solve a problem with the same mind that created it. That's why I'm here to help. And you know, I've been working with clients for over 15 years and helping them get clean and sober and change their lives and achieve inner peace and success. If you or somebody you love is struggling and doesn't know where to begin and how to make those changes to get to where they need to be, give me a call. Not tomorrow or in a week from now when you are hungover and your life is falling apart. Call now. Start making that change today and you'll be glad that you did. I'm sending you love and good vibes. Have a great day today.